Hello, my name is Mark Taylor. Welcome to the Education on Fire podcast network. This show is sponsored by the National Association for Primary Education. There comes a time in every person's life when you realise it's not about doing what you are told, but doing what you know is right for you. Let us take a journey of learning and discovery with the world's most successful people who are living the life of their dreams, walking through life using their inner wisdom and being of service to others. Forget exams, grades and test scores. What is your purpose? As we let go of what we think should be and learn from our elders to gain knowledge, inspiration and a true sense of who we are. What are your dreams? Does your life have meaning? Are you living a life of significance? Let's talk with today's guest. Hello and welcome as we spend some more time together on the Learning on Fire podcast. My name is Mark Taylor. Today I'm talking to James Newcomb. Hi James, thanks for joining me and let's explore the journey of who you are. Thanks Mark, great to be with you. Give us a little bit of a background of, of where you are in the world and, and the sorts of things that you're into in your day-to-day life. I am a musician and I'm a podcaster. I have been a musician for the better part of my life as long as I can remember. I play the trumpet, um, I play the cornet, more often these days. They're very similar. If you don't know the difference between the two, that's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I had my first lesson when I was eight years old. My dad gave me um, some lessons and it's just been my thing since I was a wee lad. It was just, that was that's that was my identity. That's how I was known. I was James, the trumpet guy. <laughs> and you know, I've done that in the army. Uh, even uh, as a civilian and like pursuing other professional interests, that was sort of my calling card was I I am a trumpet player as an F-14 flies over by reminding me <laughs> how free we really are. Um, about four years ago in early 2015, I got into podcasting and I've had a, a few shows that I've started and produced and hosted and edited and all the uh, fun stuff that goes with that. Currently, my my main gig, bread and butter, is uh, I have a small podcast editing service where I service uh, currently two clients, but they're big enough that I'm able to pay my bills. And I'm currently um, embarking on a brand new podcast adventure called Screw the Plan, Live Your Life. And that podcast is put on by my new company called the Easy School of Hard Knocks, where we teach stuff that a monkey can learn and a life only the strong can live. And I live here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Yeah, yeah, great. Sounds very interesting. Let's let's get into that in just a second. There, there are two yeah. things that I, I just want to mention first. One is, of course, the fact that as a musician myself and a podcaster, that's how we first got to know each other. Was the yeah. the fact that we were in the same the same podcasting yeah. realm, but also having that that music uh, connection as well. And I, and I've been on one of your one or two of your shows in the past and that kind of thing. So right. we've sort of known each other online for for quite a while, which is always yeah. great to better catch so up and cool do these things cool connection yep. and um and, and the other thing is is that we've had a few people um from the military on before but they've never talked much about it and i'm interested just to just to go into that just for briefly just in terms sure. of of how that sort of influenced your life in the way that you've decided to to take your life sort of post coming out of the military because i think that's yeah. a really interesting thing and because we talk a lot about education system mm. and being in the system and, and having control and not and i would imagine that military life must have the same kind of feel to some degree yeah, there's a few avenues I could go with that, but brief my brief synopsis of my military career is I was in the U.S. Army two separate times. Both times I was uh, employed as a musician. Like I said, I play trumpet. And um, the first time was right out of high school in 1994, and I was in the Army for four years. And 10 years later, I realized that music should be more of a part of my professional life and I had auditioned for a few symphony orchestras to no avail it's a very very difficult process and uh, I thought wait you know I've been in the military before maybe I can go back in and at least I can have a way of of playing my instrument on a regular basis and 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 have a way to support my family doing it and so I guess the the context in which I entered the military uh, in, in each time was very, very different. The first time was more or less to run away from home. And the second time was was to 
really be a professional musician. And um, I guess I guess speaking about exiting the military, I don't. This is something that I've put a lot of thought into because it's actually something that I've thought I could maybe reach out to exiting service members because they're they're not really told what what opportunities are in the civilian world. You basically a lot of people they enter the military when they're 18, 19, 20 years old out of high school, maybe they've been to a year of college, two years of college and they're not really well uh, well informed of what they can do. And once the, once they're in the military, talk about following the plan. My goodness. It's like you're told what to wear, how to cut your hair, um, whether or not you can have a beard, uh, is everything. All Every decision is made for you of, of any substance. And and a lot of people, they, they leave the military after 10, 12 years, sometimes 20 years, and they're scared to death because this is all they've known and they're just they're just terrified of the world around them and they're not aware of just how the abundance that exists in this quote unquote real world and they just they they have this scarcity mindset well it's like i have to i have to get this job it's just so, just so i can put food on the table or they maybe work as a civilian for the government and um I, I haven't really put any meaningful effort into this idea as I say this, but it could very well be something that like exiting service members could benefit from. It's just like make them aware of the opportunities that are there. It's just so funny to have these military jets flying over while I'm talking about the military. <laughs> yes, but just make them aware of, of, you know, you don't have to work in some BS government job. You can you can live a life that you know reflects who you really are as an individual. You can have a purpose and a mission and craft a lifestyle on that mission. So, yeah, it, it's it's a need, and I, I guess maybe having this conversation is maybe should should prompt me to investigate it further. Yeah, and I, and I love the parallels. I mean, certainly as I'm speaking to to parents and and their children through the podcast it often comes up that kind of sense that you don't feel like you have any control that the, the the world just is because you go to school and you come out and you're told what to do and how you do this and how you do that and it's only through these conversations of sort of opening up but have you thought of this yes you still maybe got to go to school but actually you could have your brain thinking about x or y whatever that happens to be whether it's your interest following your passion who can i surround myself with that really makes me feel good rather than feeling i have to always be around the number of people in my class and that kind of thing and i think just opening up to the the world to the fact that anything is possible no matter what system you may find yourself in or like you say as you come out of the system as you're leaving school or, or out of the military mm -hmm. you know this whole world is there it's a it's a really interesting thing i think just to think about as soon as you open that door a little bit then then all sorts of magical things kind of happen and um, mm -hmm. and and you talked before about running away to the military. And what does your life look like now compared to how it was when you were growing up? It was very very different. Um, I was raised to be thoroughly average. Um, not it's, it's it's certainly not a knock on my parents. My parents are wonderful people, and I love them dearly. But I wasn't I wasn't raised to believe that I was any that I was special. I mean, I, I have to be careful with how I phrase this, but I, I, I guess the way that I see the world now and my potential to make an impact in the world is very, very different from the way that I was raised. I was raised to really follow the plan, and that is you go to school and then you go to college or you join the military or whatever. And you just kind of follow that trajectory that's kind of set before you by the by society, by the schools or the or the media or maybe some of the even even the major sports organizations. They kind of have this way to they, they kind of have this um, trajectory that 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 they promote and that people just kind of fall in line and follow. And that was me. 
the way I was raised. Just kind of just go along to get along, get a job, it, it, work until you're 65 and get a pension. And um, now it's very different. Like I, like I said, I'm an independent business owner. There is no pension when you're an online entrepreneur editing podcasts, um, at least not, 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 not like an official pension within a corporation. Um, I'll be investing in my individual retirement account. That's a totally different thing, but it's, it's, if it is to be, it's up to me these days. Whereas, you know, I was raised to more or less rely on the conventional wisdom to guide my decisions, major decisions in my life. And I guess the most impactful thing about that is that the difference is really a mindset difference mm -hmm. in terms of you now feel like you're in control which is what this whole thing is about you know living life on your terms and um and and that's as much of just a mindset thing than it is a practical reality mm -hmm. i guess yeah yeah and um, what was valuable about your school experience well i was the star musician and that that gave me a lot of confidence if there's, if there's one thing that I took away from my school experience was just being the best. I got to experience being the best at something. I was first chair in the Allstate Band in Minnesota. Um, I was always first chair in the band, in the orchestra in high school. And um, that I, I guess it, it gave me a little taste of being the best, but it was kind of a double-edged sword because I got into the real world. I like, I went into the army and I just had my ass handed to me. I just, you know, I, I, I couldn't even play on the same level as some of the people that were around me. Um, so I, I got a little confident, a little, or a little overconfident, a little, maybe a little bit, um, comfortable with, with who I was and felt that I didn't really need to work for it because certain things about playing trumpet came very naturally to me. Um, but the, the value of experience cannot be overstated. And I got some real experience performing in front of people, uh, feeling comfortable in my own skin, performing in front of people, just, just, just having that experience of just being the best. And I know it sounds a little bit arrogant to say that, but there is a certain confidence that comes from that and you have to learn how to use it so that so that it makes you better rather than obnoxious but um i, ex I guess experienced a little bit of both when i was in school but yeah that was a very very valuable experience that i think has carried over into my adult life yeah, I, I love it when those sorts of things happen and when people talk about that because it's not about the fact that, yes, I was a straight-A student or, yes, I was able to do everything without even thinking about it. There's, there's usually something within your school life which speaks to you mm -hmm. in one way or another. And like you say, it might be music. That was certainly my experience too, but it might be sport. Right. It might be a, another club or another um, environment that you're in that gives you something beyond just being in the classroom. And I think as a, as a student, being in school especially if you're feeling trapped I think if you can realize that if you can just see that chink of something which really resonates with you then grab mm -hmm. hold of that and and because that's going to be the thing that propels you forward as, as you get older yeah a little disclaimer here if I had good grades I would have mentioned that <laughs> <laughs> which teachers do you remember and why Mr. Erickson in the third grade I had we our family had just moved to a new city in the suburbs of Minneapolis and he just took me under his wing and he just, he just loved me. And, um, he was a, I think he was a young guy and uh, I don't remember much of my interaction with him because it was so long ago, but I just remember he was just, he just, he just took me under his wing and made me feel comfortable, helped me feel accepted by the other kids in the class. Uh, so that's one. And then another is uh, Steve Olson, who was the band director at the high school that I went to in the ninth grade. He's the one that just gave me that shot in the arm that I needed to really go for it as a musician. And he just said, James, if you were to, if you, I think if you were to work hard, you, you could really achieve great things on the trumpet. And by the time I was a senior in high school, you know, I was first chair in the Allstate band 
And so, it, but it, I, I don't think that it would have happened if he, if he hadn't, you know, if we hadn't had that lesson together and he just said, you've got something really special and you need to work on it. So yeah, those are two that stick out. Yeah. I, the thing I, I love about the, um, having this sort of format that we do for this show is the fact that I think almost every person that's talked about their teachers, it's the thing that it's been is the fact that they've they've spoken to you on a real personal level, whether that's a talent that you have, an opportunity, or a way of ma- making you feel that enabled you to be the person that you should be in life, you know, whether it's given you the confidence or that sort of thing. And it just goes to show that it's it's about the emotion it's about the contact with people it's about who you are and being yourself fully which is is the greatest thing that you can be and also what these great teachers actually seem to be the the main thread that comes through from these conversations Mm, yeah who did you admire when you were young manny loriano he is the he was and still is the principal trumpet uh, player for the minnesota orchestra minnesota orchestra is one of the uh, has become one of the best uh, reputation as one of the best orchestras in the world. You can put them against Chicago, New York, uh, London, and they can hold their own against the best in the world. And he was like the guy in the in the Twin Cities. He was. I never actually met him when I was in when I was in school, but everybody that took trumpet seriously knew Manny Laureano, like they knew that name. And I just saw the concerts of the orchestra several times, and I just I just loved his composure, just loved the joy that he brought to the stage. I mean, you, you, you know when a musician is playing with joy, and you know when a musician isn't, and you know that as well as I do. Yeah. And he just brought that joy to the stage and just made that, trumpet sing he's 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 actually become a friend of mine in my adult life i've reached out to him a few times i've interviewed him for a couple of podcasts that i've done and um you know he and i have kind of broken bread together once or twice and now this person that i admired to the point of revered when i was young he's like i he's on my cell phone contact list for whatever that's worth and Mm -hmm now we're friends. I was like, he'll, he'll just text me every now and then and, and just say whatever. And we just kind of chew the fat a little bit. I helped him start a blog about a year and a half ago. And so it's just really cool to see that this person that had that type of impact in my life. Now, now, I mean, back then, now I'm kind of calling him up for a little advice here or there. We're trying to collaborate with him on on various things and it's just really really cool thing to see really really grateful for that it's great that someone can have an impact on your life in 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 more than one way especially over over a period of time you know i mean and i I love the fact that the first thing was the you know understanding of of that joy of playing and and actually understanding Mm -hmm. that as opposed to the fear and i I think that's such a great thing when you see someone shining through in whatever their their chosen way of life is you can tell whether it's coming from them and people can be brilliant at what they do but like you say also from a fear side as well and i think there's definitely the side i prefer to be on is the joyful (laughs) side because (laughs) hey that just brings it all together yeah and even if they're even if they're faking it who cares you know they know how to fake it and it makes the audience at ease and yeah. it's just so much more enjoyable yeah and and to have that personal relationship as you get older as well that's yeah that's brilliant that's really, really neat it. and what was the best piece of advice you've ever been given and who gave it to you you know this is something this is a piece of advice that i've given others and to be truthful i don't know that it was ever given to me by anyone else i i i think that I, I should say that I came up with the wording myself, although there's nothing new under the sun. I'm sure that I've, I've heard this advice in, very, in, in one way or another. I, I guess it was 10 or 12 years ago, just a thought came into my mind, and it was this. Be respectful of everyone and be impressed by no one. And what... What what I the way that I 
take that to mean either whether whether I'm applying it to myself or maybe I'm sharing it with someone else is be respectful. If someone has achieved more than you, pat them on the back, say good job or what can I learn from you? But don't tell yourself that they're better than you. Don't tell yourself that you can't achieve what they've achieved because what they've achieved has gone has, has come through a lot of hard work and they've gone through their school of hard knocks so to speak and they've they've paid their dues and they've done all of every metaphor that you want to think of they've done it and if they can do it you can do it if you put your mind to it if if you decide that it's something that you feel called to do and so and I don't I don't mean to sound cocky by by saying like I gave this or I came up with this because I'm I'm sure it was just I've I've heard it in one form or another over the years and I and I, I was just able to kind of put it into a, a little phrase like that. But you know, you want to be respectful of everyone, but don't think that they're better than you or what they've achieved is impossible, that you can't achieve without doing the same amount of hard work that they did. What advice would you give your younger self? I think that I would just tell myself to just be yourself. Don't worry about what your parents expect you to do. Don't worry about what your guidance counselor expects you to do. Don't worry about the standardized test that came back and said that you'd be good in these two or three fields of study. Ignore that. Just listen to your gut in those those quiet moments of life, you have a song inside of you. And it may, may not be a literal song inside of you, but you just have a message. You have something that resonates with you and only you. And follow that. And don't be stupid about it. Don't like say, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to start a business based on, on this. You You want to be wise about it. And you may need to have a job for a period of time while, while you focus on that, on that thing, business or hobby or whatever it is. But that's your focus. Your job is not your focus. Making supervisor or in your, if you're in the army, like making a certain pay grade is not your focus. That mission, that message inside of you that only you can give is your focus. And maybe that job is a means to the end of sharing that message. So, yeah, that's what I would tell my younger self. And I'm sure I wouldn't have listened. No, and uh, that, that's a very good point because I often think this as, I, uh, as we have these conversations with everyone week in, week out. It's that kind of, it seems like a great thing for those of us who are slightly older looking back. But then at the same time, I wonder if I was told it back then, whether I would have actually taken it on board. But I'm, my, my feeling is is that actually being exposed to it as a concept and an understanding and something to think about, even if it's just a seed, I think that's a supportive, a supportive thing to begin with. Mm -hmm. You talked about having uh, this new business and this sort of new ventures. But um, So what does your future look like, do you think? Well, I, I, I put a lot of thought into this business, the Easy School of Hard Knocks. I think it's a good name. I think that the concept behind it is good. I think that it's something that uh, when um, marketed wisely and correctly, or I mean with, with wisdom, it can really resonate with a lot of people. And so I envision 10 years from now, like, you know, the easy school of hard knocks is my, is my gig. Uh, I envision myself doing gigs on the side um, not because I have to or because I need the money, but because I want to. I can pick and choose the gigs that I want just based on do I want this gig? Does this gig resonate with who I am as an in individual? And if it doesn't, then I'm not going to do it. So those are the two big things as far as my professional life is concerned. Personally, my son is five years old, so he's he's a joy to be around and I savor every moment that I'm able to spend with him, with our um, living situation being as it is. We're going through a divorce, unfortunately. But um, just, just raising him to be the best man that he can be is my focus. And uh, 
hopefully my future looks something like that. But we'll see. Yeah, that's that's probably a very good caveat to all of those things. It's that kind of having an idea of what your future looks like in terms of what's important and where you're going to go. And as, as we've talked about before, that sense of where you think it is in a straight line is usually very not the case. It often is, exactly. goes from side to side, you know, point point A to B goes via all the other <sighs> letters of the alphabet. So. You get to be in your 40s and you're like, okay, well, I have this plan, but, you know, if it changes, then it's nothing new. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. <laughs> what? podcast book video film or song or, or any resource that you've it's had the biggest impact on your life and why was that i would have to give that to john lee dumas's entrepreneur on fire you and i both know him and uh i think his podcast is a little corny but i think it's by design that it's corny uh, but it's, it's like i i think of john lee dumas and i just think Little guy, like score one for the little guy. You know, he just started from nothing. He had a little money in the bank and he just started a podcast. And he worked hard, extremely hard. And now he's got a a business that's in, I think it's eight figures. I think it is, yeah. Per year or something. It's just like, that's a real victory. And that's what got me into podcasting because I heard him on an interview another another podcast that I like to listen to. And uh, I just thought, I may not make that kind of money, but it's proof that money can be made and I want to get into it. So yeah, I would have to, I would have to give that honor to Mr. JLD. Yeah, and, and am I right in thinking you've actually managed to spend some time working with him one-on-one? Yeah, I, I invested in a coaching program that he offered and um, I, it was three years ago, 2016, June flew down to Puerto Rico where he and Kate Erickson had just moved and um, spent a day with him. And that's where the uh, my mo- most recent podcast, Musicpreneur, Making Money, Mu- Making Music, was born. And, um, you know, even though the podcast didn't uh, survive or didn't make it or didn't succeed the way that I thought it would, certainly not a waste because it was just – it was an investment – not just in a business idea, but in me personally. And as a result of that time, I've developed a, uh, a friendship with John and just a, you know, a real relationship that goes beyond just an occasional comment on a Facebook group or maybe a little comment here or there on, on an email. So it's a real friendship. So it's uh, a lot of good has come out of it. Yeah, and I, and I think often it's a, that's a really important thing for us to, as we round up, that sense of it's not always, as we said a few minutes ago, about what your future will look like, but also about the things that you go through, the things that you build, the things that you're involved in. You learn from every single aspect of that, whether that proves to be the thing you do for the rest of your life or the job that comes and goes or exactly. um, some a business that you set up that may yeah. be successful or not you take away something from it which is invaluable and yeah i i think i think of jobs that i had like 15 years ago <clears throat> and i some to this day i'll think of, of, of a way that some job chucking drywall out of houses into a truck I, I i think that has impacted my life it's just a dirty job like mike rowe would love that job that i had but it was like the job where i learned how to work hard and how to just keep on going even when you your mind tells you that you can't keep going and then all of a sudden you can go further than you thought you could so everything good or bad you can take away from and you can apply to your life so james if there's anybody that'd like to find out more about your story and and the new venture that you're going into what's the best way for them to get in contact well i would send people to uh, my website it's easyschoolofhardknocks.com and if you uh, go to the website of course you can see the podcasts that I call Screw the Plan and Live Your Life. And um, I'm giving away a free course to anyone that visits the website. I have several courses available on various aspects of the technical side of online entrepreneurship. You you have LinkedIn, you have Facebook ads, you have uh, publishing eBooks. There's all sorts of things available. But just as thanks for visiting the website, I want to offer a course of your choice uh, for no charge. So, uh, head on over if this strikes your fancy. 
easy school of hard knocks. And if not, no worries. Thank you, James, for sharing your wisdom and allowing us to learn from your experiences. Well, it's been my pleasure. And I know that you've been doing this show for a couple of years now. So I have to tip my hat and say congratulations on your longevity. And I just uh, really applaud you for keeping at it. And it seems to me that you're doing rather well with it. I appreciate that. Thank you very much indeed for being on. Thanks for listening to the Learning on Fire podcast. For more information, please visit educationonfire.com and follow the links from the homepage. This show is sponsored by the National Association for Primary Education. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.